Apple gives us a ton of chip options when buying a Mac. A ton. M1, M2, M3, Pro, Max, Ultra. For a regular person trying to buy a Mac that will last for many years and won't cost like a kidney, it's simply too hard to choose. Which one do you really need? In this video, I want to take a realistic look at all the M-series chips and find the best chip for you. I've counted 11 M-series chips and 20 versions of them. Almost every chip has two versions with more CPU cores or more GPU cores. So for the sake of keeping my sanity, I'm only going to cover the configurations you can buy right now from the website. Starting with the M1. When it came out in 2020, it was a revelation. ARM architecture proved that it can perform better than 86 machines providing super impressive performance with unbelievably low energy consumption. Initially came with eight CPU cores and could be equipped with seven or eight GPU cores. Right now, Apple sells only the weakest version with eight CPU and seven GPU cores. Right now in 2024, I can say that the M1 is a beast, but it still performs very well in all tasks. I firmly believe that this processor is best suited for people who are either on a budget or need a semi and reliable machine to watch Netflix or browse the web with some occasional document typing. And I don't mean in any way that M1 is a slouch because it's not. The M1 is still plenty even for more demanding and creative tasks like video editing, editing photos, or even light programming. But don't expect it to be a rocket ship. If you're coming from the Intel-based Mac, then even if you jump from something like Core i9 to the M1, you will still be amazed by its performance. The only weakness that I can think of off is the number of GPU cores. This was fixed in the M1 Pro, but currently it's not that easy to obtain that. Even so, with only seven GPU cores, you can play Death Stranding with pretty decent graphics and high frame rate with no issues. But seriously, M1 with its eight CPU and seven GPU cores isn't suited for heavy work. And if you are a creative professional or your needs exceed browsing the web and working documents, then you most likely need something more powerful. And at this point, you could be looking at the M2 chip, but even with a higher number of GPU cores, it's still not that far from the M1. The M2 comes with eight CPU cores and also has two GPU configurations, eight or 10 cores. And although it looks like an improvement, in reality, the performance difference is almost negligible. On this channel, we have comprehensive reviews of both MacBook Air's 13 inch with eight GPU cores and 15 inch with 10 cores. And let me tell you, after testing both of these computers, the difference in performance is real, but it's gonna be completely wiped out if you buy the base versions of these MacBooks. If you aren't upgrading the unified memory, then you are not going to see any noticeable difference between 8 and 10 GPU cores. And since the M2 has exactly the same number of CPU cores as the M1, basically has the same audience, entry-level users with simple needs. The M3 has the same layout as the M2 with 8 CPU and 10 GPU cores. Some might say that it's the M2 on steroids, but it cannot be further from the truth. Despite having the same number of cores as the M2, the M3 uses the 3 nanometer technology instead of 5 and has a vastly superior GPU. It's much better at allocating memory for the GPU depending on its needs and supports hardware accelerated ray tracing. The M3 is like a perfect stepping stone for someone who doesn't know yet whether they will need extra performance or not. Though I personally don't recommend choosing it because for the same amount of money as it will cost you to get the M3, you can get something more interesting and more powerful. And right now, I believe we arrive at the most interesting processor on this list, the M2 Pro. It has 10 or 12 CPU cores and 16 or 19 GPU cores. Despite the fact that it's not that much different from the M1 Pro, the M2 Pro you can buy directly from Apple without breaking the bank. Apple still sells refurbished 14-inch MacBook Pros with this chip, and for $1,600, it's a real bargain. Bargain. Oh, and it's also an option for the Mac Mini that retails at $1,300. The M2 Pro is a real beast, not gonna lie. I have a heap of friends who use the M2 Pro Max and all of them are over their heads about how good it is. Obviously, it's super great for day-to-day -day things like web browsing and watching movies, but most importantly, it also excels at demanding workflows. 10 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores is more than enough to comfortably compile even the heaviest projects, render complex 
3D scenes and edit high resolution videos with heavy encoding. So I think if you are a professional who needs the best balance of performance, features and price, the M2 Pro is a no brainer. If you need even more power than that, it makes sense to look at the M3 Pro instead. It can be equipped with 11 or 12 CPU cores and 14 to 18 GPU cores. The M3 Pro has exactly the same benefits over the M2 Pro as the M3 has over the M2. Its graphics system is far superior and even with a lower number of cores can outperform M2 Pro in most tasks, especially the ones involving ray tracing. Basically, it does everything that the M2 Pro does, but better, faster, quieter, and less hot. I also want to make it clear that the M2 Pro is probably the last chip on this list that you shouldn't pay to upgrade. Paying extra money to get one more CPU and four more GPU cores, in my opinion, isn't a smart decision. It would be much smarter to spend this money on a RAM upgrade. And to know which option to choose, be sure to check out our video on Mac RAM. It's really good. But if you find yourself in a rare situation when you need even more cores than the M3 Pro gives, there is also the M2 Max. And this is a real treat, a noticeable step over the M2 and M3 Pro in terms of performance. Armed with 12 CPU and 30 GPU cores, whether it is a huge data set that needs to be analyzed for patterns, compiling a big project in Xcode, or editing 8K videos, the M2 Max is gonna make short work of that. But it's only getting better from here. Because the M3 Max steps things up with 14 and 16 CPU cores and 30 to 40 GPU cores. And that's a lot. Personally, it's a bit hard for me to fathom the situation where I might need so much power. But if you are a software developer, if you work with neural networks or develop games and desperately need that ray tracing powers, then you've just found your best pick. If you are shopping for a new Mac, then you need to understand that the Max chips are for extreme professionals. And unless you're doing something truly complex with your laptop, there's absolutely no reason to go to such extremes. And it's stupidly expensive. $3,200 for the cheapest MacBook with the M3 Max. That's a lot of money. And the M3 Max also can be equipped with a variety of RAM configurations. So if you are someone who needs this absurd amount of power, you might want to check out our video about RAM and MacBooks. But if you thought that the M3 Max was impressive, I've got one more crazy beast in store for you, the M2 Ultra. It comes with 24 CPU cores and 64 GPU cores. On top of that, it has double the neural engine cores, 32. If you want, you can spec it up to have 76 GPU cores, which is absolutely insane. Add to that a ton of media and code decode engines, and you're looking at the most powerful processor Apple has ever created. I imagine someone buying a Mac Studio or a Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra, like some sort of Tony Stark, the workflow that would fully utilize all the capabilities of the M2 Ultra must really be truly demanding. Maybe it's uh, simulating the black hole like in the Interstellar movie or calculating particles for something like nuclear fusion or rendering an entire Hollywood movie in one sitting. But I know one thing, if you know that you need so much power that you're gonna buy the M2 Ultra, then why are you watching this video? If I was to give you the buying guide for Mac chips in a few sentences, then it would sound something like this. If you need a computer to browse the web, edit a few videos, or compile a small project, then you should go for the M1, M2, or M3, depending on your budget. If you feel adventurous and want to give yourself a headroom for the future, then go for the M2 Pro and M3 Pro. If you're a super professional video editor or you frequently compile projects with thousands upon thousands lines of code, then go for the M2 Max or the M3 Max. And if you are clinically insane, only then do you need all those 24 CPU and 76 GPU cores of the M2 Ultra. That's it. But if you want the best bang for the buck, the best combination of price and performance, then I believe there is no better chip than the M2 Pro. And we have a really good video about it, so be sure to check it out and see you there.